You are listening to Open Democracy. I am Not Your Refugee, a podcast in collaboration with some of the refugee community organizers, activists, and artists working to challenge stereotypes around migration. With thanks to the Pulitzer Center for Funding Support. We hope to see an equal uh, society with equal opportunity for all and be able to be recognized according to their social contribution and not only according to how much they have or what kind of paper they got. Wael started the Syrian Greek Youth Forum, the SGYF, in 2018 to advocate for human rights, to connect people together, to break stereotypes around migration, and to create their own opportunities in the city. He sits down with another member of SGYF, Karim al qabani and our reporter Barbara Flott, to talk about how activism, creativity, and active citizenship intersect. Enjoy the conversation. Hello, my name is Wael Habbal. And here is Karim al qabani from Syria. And having an amazing sitting here with you guys around. <laughs> yeah, drinking tea. Drinking tea. Art is one, would say, a ch- basic channel for us or a tool that we started our journey with. So in 2018, in order to introduce our community and our team to the society, uh, we started appearing in different festivals and events and we initiated our own festivals. So people start seeing us from different aspects, you know, like when they see us in the stage or when they are see us uh, happy dancing together or singing, you know, they start seeing uh, different things than the stigma or like, you know, the generalization about uh, refugee. Art is really also the common language where we really meet with many different other background and other culture. Art and music, like it's its way of diplomatic and politics action. Remember how in Syria we, like our revolutions and our demonstrations, was just songs. The first event that the Syrian and the Greek Youth Forum did, it was introduction to the Syrian culture. And it was an eight-hour event in uh, one neoclassical building in Metaxorio area. Uh, what we did that day, we, we brought Syria actually to that building uh, with the lifestyle of Syria, with the culture of Syria, with the smell of Syria, with the food of Syria, with the theater, the music, the dance. Eight hours Syria was there. It was a big uh, chance for us also to understand more how we can uh, use this art, you know, in our journey and how it become, you know, like a solid uh, tool for us. Because we looked at people's faces, we saw their feedback, we saw how much they were happy, you know, when they were dancing the Dabke dance. And you look at that video, we still have it until now, you see everyone dancing equally together. And that's what Karim was mentioning. You know, from 100 years, you know, he was telling me stories about uh, Dabke, how people used to hold their hands across the cities. And that was to transfer a message, you know, that people are all in solidarity. We used also the other tradition that Karim brought to the community as well, uh, the art of Arada. It's, it's an asso- social performance, let's say, in Damascus, Kings, where... Somebody is from the community singing, and all the rest they know the songs they they repeat it and it used it used in celebrity and it used in revolution time um, history like uh, because we sing now songs like have been rated against the Ottoman Empire from the mosque.
I feel lucky, like I belong to a rich culture, group, like rich, rich amount of art and uh, culture. Also, it gave us more than our individual thing, like as a as a team. We are not just reaching out or expressing expressing our art. Like we are, we are strongly building a platform so any artist can really practice his art when we can practice our own culture and give opportunity for other communities and other cultures. Sound, just a recording and the sound. This is something like really I find on it my my freedom, let's say my my creativity, my in the sound. We made a uh, sound archive. We have the uh, sound archive called Active Citizen Sound Archive. The sound of the city, like what's what's the sound of the city sound like? So this is the sound archive here, basically. I'm gonna share it with you. Oh, yeah. So you're gonna. What Karim is mentioning is a very big resource. You know, very. It has a lot of material uh, from different events, different stuff that we made ourselves. Like, if you see here, like there's an uh, this uh, recording. It's a recording in the social kitchen. Yeah. Is that Flora? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. But it has been bought by our friend Saeed. Saeed and We saw the impact of art and how people actually really forgot all the, you know, the political identity of ours as refugees and they start seeing like these people who are being part of the city and as a result of that we came also with the idea of active citizenships like regardless of where you came from or what is your background if you take responsibility and you take initiative to activate yourself your community and your city you become an active citizen so anyone is working on personal development, communal development, and local, that mean benefiting. This is an active citizen, regardless of what paper they have. Active citizenships is a result of, you know, gathering of many active citizens acting towards the city and towards themselves, but without being stuck in the idea, I have paper or not, I was allowed or not. Refugees is just a political expression. Like the human being movement or the movement of the people, it's so long, so long ago, like thousands and th thousands of years. Yeah, it's all people have always moved. No, around. Like yeah. most recently they start calling. Like they have this word called refugees. We just exclude the idea of being refugee and just for like just excluded and start act. In the life, not from this point of your life, not, not from the immigrated point. In our case, we see a big motivation in here. Because already, because of the stigma, because of the stereotypes, and because of some reality, you know, people expect from refugees to either do less or give less. Because we are in a crisis. When we show the other way around, when we show that, yes, we have been through all these difficulties, but now we are taking initiative, we are doing double job, and we are taking this on, the, on these responsibilities. When the locals see you in this situation, the locals who are going through the same struggle in their city, they would say, why not? Why not me as well to be an active citizen? If those people who came from a different country and they lost every, almost everything and hope, but they are doing it. And we saw these results, you know, we saw it in the faces of our community members, of the, you know, society around us. When they saw us start talking about something different, different than, let me say that, clothes and uh, food. And then, and we are talking about something has to do with the mind and with the soul. You see the hope getting back to them. And this, I believe, the situation, the solution in order to get people back again together. Because also, you can relate to this, I believe. When you are working on something for so long, and after so long you see yourself dealing with the same things again. You know, housing, clothes, food, medication, 
and we see you, you see yourself you almost get tired of this work and you almost want to go away from it because you have your own life as well and you have your own struggle but i think when people sense cre- yeah, yeah when people sense this creativity they would want to join back again you know and to take our hands together and you know to activate actually the solidarity that we all speak about yeah. like if we come to the point again like the the creativity on the uh, being really active and use the art and being so this is brings the hope to people they really want to meet each other you know mm-hmm. i may help you you may help me i may stand for you you may stand with me but okay for a time we want to talk about things how you think how you talk how you speak how how you know like i had a lot of questions for greek i ask my friends a lot of friends they ask me they start asking me different questions, not the typical one, which is, do you eat pork? Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, but like, we start here, different you questions. You remember something. One other thing. I'm really Actually, sorry yeah, I interrupted you. Like, how oh, you look no, no. European now. What? You yeah. look European. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. In this moment, yeah. you imagine yourself. How oh. I was before, was I, did I look like a banana? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A couch. A watermelon, right? Yeah. Like, what do you to look like? <laughs> what do you mean with that example? And I really also believe when, when when I come back to Syria, like when when I start we go on China. So like I say, I don't want to come back the Syrian Karim. Or, like I really want to come back also active citizen. Like just an active citizen, not a Syrian. Just see, because like a lot of people and artists and from everywhere they will come and we all we will have our own life, you know, our daily life, and we will have the culture like how we wake up, how we meet, how we make music. So that's the culture and that's that's the identity that I believe we need to have it. And also we don't wanna forget Corona. We don't like we, we don't have the time to forget Corona yet. It's really it's really showing how we are really equal, you know, as much we have power, political people or really basic simple people, they all get affected. Mm-hmm. And we all need to do respond for climate change and big cases like this. So we should, I see as a human being, to be really looking for a platform to really equalize and gather all of us. Yeah. So we see active citizens like it's really in our experience, it support us. And we will expand it more like so where we all can meet and discuss these issues, talk about them, you know, and involve the art as much we can you know like to to empower the movement yeah yeah it's interesting what you were saying Olivelle, about how it influences uh greeks when mm. they see people but it's also there's like loneliness and disconnection and isolation is a big problem mm-hmm. there's a lot of people very lonely yeah. and, and this... actually our experience like in, in in the loneliness especially it makes us more uh, you know sympathized with you know, to understand actually how people alone would feel. And you see it a lot in the city. We know a lot of people who are tired of the reality, you know, the Greek reality at the moment, and they prefer to be isolated. But also we saw how the picture changed before Corona, when we had our events in public places, in a park or in a square, you know, and we are dancing. And we saw how also other people came. And after a while, you discover that this individual was actually going really through hard time. Mm -hmm. And slowly, slowly, you know, they opened up because they saw another person who also is going through very hard time as it's trying to enjoy as well. Mm -hmm. It's not always the case, of course, but we got across Mm -hmm. such people. But I understand, yeah. Um, And we questioned ourselves a lot at the beginning. Like, uh, we saw all the support is going to facilitate the refugee crisis. But also when we saw some local cases, I asked myself, like, how these people didn't get the support as well? Like, why no one knows about them or why no one reached out to them? Like, we know about Greek families here, their house from outside looks nice. If you enter the house, it's empty. There's nothing. And some of them, they are even very proud, you know, they don't tell anyone about it. They don't ask for help. 
It's difficult in here, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. And even for artists, it's very, very difficult in here. We know so many artists, they are struggling, you know, to make a living in yeah. here. Or to be established as artists, because the competition is crazy. There is only maybe Onassis and Stravros Niarchos Foundation who actually support people who want to do something. And another few small uh, galleries and the museum um, who need a big competition to get into it. Mm -hmm. But in general, um, in a Greece, in the Greek society, not society, in a Greek state, they didn't support art that much, you know. And people who are involved in the, you know, the culture ministry or the art ministry, they were not the one who's supposed to lead this well, place. We are talking so, about the health in Greece. Yeah. Like we are talking about health. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like all the healthcare. Mm -hmm. We we are not on the level that talking about art uh, movement. But I would say here. I like a lot of time that people, they meet us and they, whoa, like, we are not going to help them with food or with clothes, you know. We start discussing project, big project. Like a few days ago, we visit a friend, he's an architect and he have three property, like three shops. Like, closed shop from so long ago. So he heard about some people, they have plans to really make this three shop active and make it work. So when we came, he looked at us and they say, yeah, guys, you can do it. You know, but when we talked and when he hear about what we are doing and what we are planning to do, he, guys, you really impressed me. Like new things we know about refugees now, you know, like he's a friend we just met, you know. And we have a lot of this time, like a, a lot of times it really showed a lot of, like in the village in Siva. We go, for example, and we buy a lot of uh, cheese and uh, product from families. They, they, they don't know how to sell it. Mm -hmm. So when we go and buy, we give opportunities, like we, we filmed sometime, we brought a lot of Greek artists to art, to be actors. So also... Being an active front of like during inside the society and giving this picture to the society that this is really perfect time and we hope soon like everything it will be like this you know because for example Syria and Greece as culture traditionally like so long it's really connected you know and in many different level and so we want to keep this like keep this reputation and that needs art needs activism. The Yellow, Festival. the Yellow Days Festival, also like well, we were invited to this festival, it's an international festival that happens once a year or twice a year in Athens. And we were at the beginning doing some Dabke class cool. to teach people. Dabke. That was 2019. Yes, because exactly. at this time I went to the festival in you Lesbos. You were in Lesbos, exactly. You were yeah, we in. hold two festivals <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> and then we had me, you know, like, this was so in this festival we practice different artistic skills from dance to music to food and we did our own you know theatrical play we called it the journey of empowerment and through this symbol play, you know, that we made it together one day before the festival, we wrote the script, we say what to do. We tried to show the journey of a refugee, you know. You said the day before you wrote the script. Seriously. <laughs> I did it as a journey from Syria, Lebanon, Turkey, you know, yeah. Jordan, uh, Greece and everything. So we passed through a lot of countries and cities and in each city, like somebody who presents the city. And he tried to challenge Wael, you know, in a way, like, I don't know, maybe Abu Salah, he get violent. He was, pre he was uh, presenting Turkey. Seriously, they took an advantage life. of it. That yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, oh, you are here now, let us uh, beat you a little bit. In Greece, actually, they used to do this kind of festival, but in the beginning, they make an open microphone of some people. They came and speak about social or politics issue. This is very common in Athens. This is in the identity of Greece, the art and the politics. Here it was a nice day. We were uh, rehearsing 
in communitism building in the roof. You remember this day? Two years ago. Elias Al Fakhizi is a Greek artist. I mean, he's a history. You know, he plays music for Um Kalthum, Abdul Halim wow. Hafiz. He was in Egypt, he was back then, and he have his own band, Firket Al Anwar. It's Takhat Sharki. He's a member of his UAF, and he's a great example of, you know, a Greek artist being within our community. We, start, we wrote together, it's called Hurriya, Freedom. Really? It's a very simple, you know, song, but we wrote it about the situation in Greece, you know, we tried to describe the whole journey. <laughs> Do you want to ask each other anything on this? Do you want to, is there anything that you want, like, in this episode about active citizenship, about art here, about the situation, about the current, anything that mm. you want to ask? Karim, what is your view for artists who are struggling already in order to establish their career? and to develop themselves. What is your view through SGYF? You know, how you can imagine SGYF could be helpful in their life? Well, that's a good question. So I believe we're going we're gonna to facilitate an art plan where people, they could find their own, own a physical place where they can really practice art. And we want to really find the best collaboration where we mention their art in the right places and we could really try to make sure that their art will be, let's say, funded or uh, supported somehow, where they can also keep going on. If we couldn't really bring the right funding for them, I hope we could really submit a uh, business idea or business project where the whole income of this project goes to the art field. And I am really expecting a change not just in the art field, but it's going to be a big change in the social field. And this is, for me, this is the enough. Because from there, a lot of things will move on. A lot of things that will be really proved from the community. I really hope so. I hope so. Yeah. I really hope so. I would ask you what I also question. Like we, we start we start involved together in building and making a community building in 2018. But when I met you from before, I see how I saw how strong you were with really such big motivation, like uh, and hopeful motivation. And I knew when 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 we left Syria and. Deciding to be immigration in, in Europe, that was a hopeless moment. So how, how I, I really want to see how he was really full motivated and full strong, deciding to take action with really long-term plans. Well, a strong question, Karim al -Qabani. <laughs> Well, I think I, I always ask myself, you know, the same question as well, you know, when I feel really sometimes tired or I feel it's becoming the situation hard, I feel like how I'm going to keep up or how I am keeping up. I think first time when I realized that I was giving a second chance in my life, you know, we always say that maybe the bullet that killed our friend, maybe by mistake, it would kill us instead and we wouldn't be alive. But the fact that I realized I was giving a chance 
second chance in my life. It motivated me, you know, to give other chances, but also to give myself a chance to live this life, to experience it. You know, first time I started as a translator, I went when I managed, to, you know, to make someone happy just because I translated for them, I find out myself useful. And I wanted to, to feel that again. I'm really useful to this life and I can achieve stuff. And then slowly, slowly, when we started the community, I found myself as a person how much useful I am in the community as well. So I wanted to do more. And then I would say it became like an addiction. You know, you never want to stop doing it. And you finish the things and then you look at it, oh great, but I want to do more and more and more. I like, I ask you this because, bro, like the way that you are an active citizen, it's big also motivation for me the way that you are now. So I'm really proud, bro. Listen, lads, thank you so much. I'm gonna, thank you. I'm gonna turn this off in a minute. Hey, thank you also mm -hmm. for, for this uh, nice discussion that happened. That was a conversation recorded in Athens with our reporter Barbara Flant and two members of the Syrian Greek Youth Forum, Wael Habbal and Karim Al Qabani. You can listen to some of their work produced by another member of the SGYF, Tom Western, on Movement Radio, part of Onassis Stegi. Thanks too to Omar Al Kilani, who wrote and performed our theme music. Next episode, we continue to hear from refugees in London and Greece who are working to break the false narratives around migration. You have been listening to I Am Not Your Refugee, produced by Barbara Flood and myself, Mahmoud Hasino, funded by the Pulitzer Center. You've been listening to a podcast supported by Open Democracy. If you liked it, please consider making a small donation to help us do more. As a small media organisation, Open Democracy relies on the backing of people like you to keep going. Go to opendemocracy.net now to support our work. And one more thing, to avoid missing out on future episodes, don't forget to subscribe to this show in your favourite podcast app.